Hey, what's up, you guys? You're watching Team APS. I'm Paul. I'm Alec. Larry. And today we're going to be having a little conversation about something that we've all been thinking sort of lately, which is that Yu-Gi-Oh! needs a casual format. Uh-oh. More specifically, though. I was going to say, define casual. <laughs> yeah. More specifically, Yu-Gi-Oh! needs something that's equivalent to Magic the Gathering's Commander format. The reason why I wanted you here, Larry, for this conversation is because... You've been playing more magic lately, <laughs> right? So, uh, how do you talk talk to us about it? What's uh, what's the magic experience like compared? I mean, for, for me, I just enjoy well, even well. There's a whole bunch I want to say, but I'll start. Yeah, here. okay. For, for my experience with magic recently, I've enjoyed it. Um, I, all I play right now is Commander. I tried playing Pioneer once, and I realized this one, this is not for me because it's just competitive like Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's like, ah, quickly beat your opponent down. But anyway, um, I've enjoyed Commander, even though I guess not one of the best or slash worst kept secrets in Commander is even Commander has its own competitive scene because the, the card base is so wide and has so many many things that just do so much or can do so much that even in commander in a four person pod there are there is always a chance depending on what somebody's playing that they could theoretically in the game like their second turn yeah it doesn't happen a lot and you know if that happens in your pod usually shun that person or you, you know you got to see them out in the parking lot i don't advocate violence but there's still a chance. So to say a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh equivalent, I think you could do something like that to where because of course in Commander every card is at one. Every card, save for those handful of banned Magic cards that'll be banned forever and ever, always, Amen. Um, is at one. You can play anything at one. Um, but to have a Yu-Gi-Oh format comparable like that to where every card is at one i don't think you could have a Yu-Gi-Oh commander i think you would have to more or less they would have to create a brand new card type specifically made for that so because anything else just kind of breaks it like if there's just a super card with just a broken effect that you just like cast like in command of course you can cast your commander then if it leaves it goes back and then you just cast it again for the cause i don't know what the equivalent of that to Yu-Gi-Oh could be but to have a Yu-Gi-Oh form format where every card, save for a save few cards that you would have to make another ban list for, because some cards are broken regardless of mm -hmm. what format, have every card at one, I think it could work. Um, the issues with it, I think I'll save for in a minute. When we I do want to hone in a bit on the talk about Commander as a casual format, because what's interesting... Many people talk about how, oh yeah, Commander is that casual format. It's for casuals, yeah. and, and, and that's I, the big draw of the format. Yeah. But and then you get there's so many the cases casuals. where it's not that simple, right? Like you mm -hmm. said, someone can show up with a deck that's much more competitive, and is the is the trick to Commander the social pressure? That the group, because you you always play commander in groups, as far as my understanding you, you is. You generally do play and in groups of four. So is the idea is if if someone does show up and they're playing like at a higher power level than everyone else, then like your social pressure is supposed to just kind of push them out or like force them to like. I, and I played enough commander where sometimes that don't even matter. Mm. Uh, so what I was really more so getting at is less mechanically that Yu-Gi-Oh needs to have like a commander equivalent, mm. and more so. Just like, the thought of it? The thought of something that Yu-Gi-Oh... So basically, here's how it goes. If you want to learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! today, mm -hmm. you are pretty much forced to play the single format, which is advanced format, mm -hmm. where pretty much everything is legal that's outside the, of the small the, band. That's the name? Of that's the name of the, yeah. form, the Yu-Gi-Oh! format. is called advanced format. I didn't know that. Yeah. And the reason... Like, there used to be like traditional format, and that was like a thing. But um, anyways, if you want to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, you have to play modern Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Yu-Gi-Oh!, there's not kind of a slow summon a monster, set a couple cards. That doesn't exist anymore in Yu-Gi-Oh. And Yu-Gi-Oh is a really high octane experience, right? Like, first turns go a long time. There are a lot of combos. A lot of decks really kind of demand that you know their gimmick. You have to know how their combos work and where to stop it. And I sometimes find myself thinking that, while I don't mind tolerating that in a tournament setting... I think that when you just want to sit down and it's like very hard kind to of just go to the card shop and just play for playing sake. Exactly. You don't just not like a, in a, a relaxed Yeah, that that's that's what I want to kinda of hear more about is like there's not a relaxed way of just 
hey, let's play a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! where we're not both on eggshells about, and, like, and, the and combos even, and, even and the interactions. Then, even back in, I'll say back in the day, but way back when, I don't say fights would start at card shop because it's like, yeah, people want to play, you know, casual. And that's why I ask, like, what do you define casual? Because different people define casual as different things. Yeah, How many times have we gone on uh, in the past where, what's the name of that thing? Before we had Master Duel. Um, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Y- Pro yeah, and well, stuff. Yeah, or Y-Lo Pro books. and stuff. Where people like look like casual, and then they will have a whole list of like their definition of casual. Like, oh yeah, no, this, no, this, no, this, no, this, yeah, no, this, yeah. no, this, 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 format for magic and because i was wondering if in Yu-Gi-Oh, if our if we had a some type of a casual format would it maybe making it a group format where we kind of all like gang up on people who are try harding oh my god that, <laughs> with that could that be a way of like uh, it, creating it, this format and even then for like a, a Yu-Gi-Oh commander format i won't say you probably might need a whole new master rule for it but you would need something. It would have to be completely separate. Similar, like, like you even. you would have to adjust the rules in some form or way to make it. Yeah. Better or fair, because even in Yu Gi Oh, even even to have a commander format where say everything would be at one, say for a few cards. I'm di- still thinking there are a few decks that will probably still just pop off, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, the rules of Yu Gi Oh. And then your, ch- your chances kind of, of like drawing your out are like even less so because everything's at one. I mean, our card pool is massive, and it's, so it's not, many it's not magic massive. So many decks, they you know they never get like hit on the ban list, but they are very annoying. They they have five <laughs> different ways to get to that those select few cards that they need, and all they need is either one or two of them. And if you have so many various ways to search, I don't know. It's so it's kind of a I'll say a catch twenty two or like a. Here's yeah, the thing I want to know from you. So why have you played less Yu Gi Oh? Has the game like it seems like the game's maybe been a little bit less attractive? What? It's, why is that? Just um, I didn't. One, it started because I really got into magic, and I when I get into stuff, I just they kind of know and they talk about me behind my back, and it makes me sad. But when I get into something new, it's very hard for me to practice moderation. I just kind of go into it, and then I'm just like all the way in. If you catch my drift. So when I started Magic, of course, I was all the way in. Like I was deep in that thing. And Yu-Gi-Oh took a, a little bit of a backseat. And then at one point in time when I was like, okay, I'm going to try to play again. Like, the format was completely new and different to me. I was like, I don't know what any of this stuff does. And I don't say I didn't, well, kind of, you say I didn't feel like learning all the new stuff and all the new mechanics and all the new cards. And it was like, well, I don't have this stuff. You know, I'm still rocking with whatever I was playing way back when. Like, I, I just don't feel like trying to re- reintroduce like... myself. And then once I started learning about, you know, what's good in the meta right now, it's like, ah, oh, this is BS. I really don't want to play this and I don't want to play against it. So I'm just going to stick to, you know, the good old... Magic, so I don't want to say gotta speak. I had a uh, a similar experience. Hey, I did not want to play in the uh, TR limit format. That and so I pretty much mm. skipped the entire format. And when TR limits kind of were, were hit enough where I didn't have to expect to like play against it something anymore, else was a problem. Well, it wasn't even a, that was well actually that is the problem <laughs> because I was getting back into Yu Gi Oh and all the new strategies and cards that had come out during TR limits reign of Yu Gi Oh. I had no idea what they were, mm-hmm. and I was confused, and I didn't want to play against them. I was like, I don't know what brand it changed. I don't know what these decks are doing anymore. I think the big part of it is just that like Yu-Gi-Oh moves fast, mm-hmm. not just like on a game-to-game basis, but like in terms of you know, if you were to quit playing Yu-Gi-Oh even just like two years ago, the amount that you have to catch up on the expectations of how TR elements work, how Kashira works, how the new Snake Eye stuff works, mm-hmm. all these things. It's, it's very demanding to, like, catch back up to. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that there's a format, barring what we're going to talk about in a second, which is um yeah. kind of Edison, but, like, there isn't a format where you can just be like, hey, I've taken a break for a couple of years. 
I still want to just sit down and play and like not, you know, have a knife to my throat with like every play. And um, I think like comparatively with Pokemon and Magic, it doesn't seem like there's as much of that problem. I mean, Pokemon decks, like they rotate, I know. Mm -hmm. So that's like a thing, but it just feels like you're never so far behind mechanically and with the expectation of like what you're supposed to know and how you're supposed to engage with it. And even with that, I'll say, which Magic has its own, Magic's formats, like they have rules within that format, some cards you can and can't use within that format. And generally, if you kind of know or you play it, you kind of know or you play it. Whereas Yu-Gi-Oh! are even with the ban list, the formats are ever changing, ever evolving. You just yeah, kind of you have to go with it and just kind of go with it. I guess Magic and even I don't know how Pokemon is, but Magic and Pokemon once once you start playing, you kind of know within the parameters that you're playing with. Even with Pokemon, with you know, you some stuff goes out of rotation. All of that stuff goes out of rotation. So we're going like almost starting fresh. Yu-Gi-Oh! just kind of changes a little bit and it ebbs and flows and you just kind of got to get in and ride that wave. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's almost like a, a lot to keep track with. I want to talk too about uh, Goat and Edison format have kind of popped up in recent years as these snapshot retro formats that help to recapture a lot of what people liked about old school Yu-Gi-Oh! Kind of older monsters, older themes, a slower pace. I, I have my gripes with them. What are you gripes? Oh, goodness, sorry. Mm-hmm. What are your gripes? Yeah, so I don't have any problem with the formats, but I think that the main problem with them is that Konami kind of is like one foot in, one foot out. So you know, like, Widget of the Coast release Commander pre-constructed decks. Mm-hmm. There is not a pre-constructed Edison product of any kind. No. And so if you want to get into Edison format, yeah. Did Konami come up? Well... So Edison is a player-made format. I think that's but Konami part of, part of the has problem. partly acknowledged it at YCS events. There are like Edison side events now. Uh-huh. They call them. They all under the umbrella of Time Wizard formats. <laughs> but Konami kind of doesn't want to fully embrace it. The thing is, though, Commander was also that's kind of the and, same and, and story. And I thought about that too, but also thinking about. And I guess it's culturally different because, you know, we, well, I don't know if I can say this, because, you know, we've had dealings with Konami in the past and because everything flows through Japan, Japan is very staunch and strict. Yeah, I feel like they're probably very resistant to like the idea of this. This is how we play. Um, I mean, I would like to draw the biggest difference between uh, Commander and our Time Wizard formats. Um, It Commander's card pool changes and increases. Yes. They add new cards to that, get, that casual it'll... card pool. <laughs> so you can you if you want to be a commander player, you can just be that forever and never get tired of it. Yeah. But if you want to be a GOAT player or an Edison player, you're kinda stuck. It's the card pool, the card is, pool is, is it's snatch static. Shot. Yeah. And And I think that actually sorry sorry. I just oh I'm I just uh, saying it's static and you can you can get bored. Yeah, I think that's actually another thing with Edison that's one of my gripes is that outside of the card accessibility, because there are some Edison cards that still need reprints that are hard to get, but it's the fact that Edison does not change. So while you can you can dive deeper into the existing card pool and find depth, but the main thing is like, what if I wanted to play a Melfi deck? Yeah, you could. Right? You can't play it in Edison. Oh. But also if you play it in advanced format, you're gonna get stomped. Then you'll get stomped. So then where is my Melfi deck supposed to be played? With your friends. Right. Table 500. Yeah, it's like a table 500, I guess. I, or... I have one thing, and it could be, I guess, is in, in many ways, well, I think this is the main driving factor as to why all of this, both Wizards of Coast, Konami, why everybody does things. Does Gold or Edison format make Konami money? Yeah, that's the thing. That's it, it, doesn't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. So, so of course they're not, because it's, it's not going to make them money. Yeah. Commander makes Wizards of the, the Coast, Coast loads, loads of money. Of money. Commander is fixed. easily the most popular way of playing Magic. Just it's like what you said, everybody all you have to do you. is print the Commander decks. They going somebody yeah. gonna buy them. And the thing is, like when you whenever you hear about Magic the Gathering at a card shop. The first thing that the average shop is going to tell you is What's like when, like when, you know, Commander, Knight. Commander Knights this day. Oh, you want to you want to try out Magic? Sure, just play Commander. It's fun. Yes. It's casual. There's not a super high learning curve. 
It's a social game. We in Yu-Gi-Oh, the closest thing we have to a commander deck is the starter decks. And do we buy that? Yeah, they're not, not really very really popular. No. It, it, so, so why would they put all this money into like a brand new format that would be very similar to like a starter deck? When yeah. you know we compl- we, we're not gonna buy them. We've seen so, the decks stay on the shelves for so long. Yeah, they collect because, dust because we hadn't bought them. Because ah, that's not good. I'm so not my proposition that. with that is actually that they need what they probably need to be doing is really own up to Time Wizard. Like they call it Time Wizard format, but I think that they should actually brand it that way, where there are Time Wizard products, or maybe even more specifically, because I don't want to just stay locked in time is I think that they should make literally what is called... So I don't know if you've ever seen a Pokemon product. They have power levels in their products. They do. Power levels? Yeah. There's like oh, power level I do one, remember two, that. Three. Yes, it's yeah. like a little... The bar that you get when you get the service on your phone. I yeah, yeah, that. yeah. There's a power level. So <laughs> what if there was literally a Yu-Gi-Oh format that it, it's just... It is like mid-power level. So you're not going to be dealing with 10-minute turns and like 50-step combos and all that stuff. You're oh. going to be able to play... Your the Melfi. Crystal B structure deck. Yeah, your Crystal wow. B structure, your Melfi deck, your Flame Swordsman deck. I know you said you wanted to build Flame Swordsman oh, from Maze of right. Memories. Like, but then it's like, well, why? but then like, why would you build it? Because like, yeah. if you go to locals, you'll just get like beaten by some top tier deck. So like, where do you play it? And, and it depends on your locals. Because some locals they just don't have time for it. Some locals they only. Their whole purpose of locals is to get ready for the next YCS or the next region. For a lot of people, that is the, <laughs> and their goal. me as a casual player, where do I fit in? No one wants to duel me because I have my Table 500 deck that I just want to have fun. It's like, oh, I'm, why am I going to waste time dueling you when... Yeah, because you know, like, that's not practice for the Snake Eye matchup. No. So I think, for the 15th million time. Yeah, and that's what I think like, Yu-Gi-Oh is lacking. I feel like Edison is like... It's part of the solution, and it hasn't picking up. And I don't want to like discount Edison as a thing because, like, I know there are people who really love it. Konami has to; f- they they would have to fully. But they have to kind of go go deep into that yes. idea or that mindset, it, and that also because, like, going back to what I said, that also implies they're gonna have to lose money on it for a good few years in order for it to really be a thing. Or at least yeah. they're gonna have to take a a, a financial risk. That's yeah. A, you know, this wasn't a Konami-sponsored event, and so it's a shame that they didn't see it, but when we went to TCG Con, they had an Edison tournament, and it was it actually had a very large turnout. Yeah, and like the, seven rounds worth, at least. The most interesting thing about the Edison players were not a lot of them were current Yu-Gi-Oh players. Some hadn't played Yu-Gi-Oh in years, but they knew Edison format. It was It's a synchro-based format. It was cards that they recognized, and they played in tournament. But then they were also just sitting there playing friendlies. They were just, they would just walk up to you. Hey, want to play Edison? Yeah, Edison's, I can't remember the last time people were just like, "Hey, Edison is picking up that no, level of." Tesla. <laughs> Edison's picking up that level of like kind of casual. You can walk up to someone maybe at a tournament and just offer to play Edison. I just think that what if somebody still wants to play with Xyz monsters? Like, what if I have an Xyz archetype, like say Batlin boxers, right? That is, you can play against my snake eyes. It's battling, oh god, battling boxers. It's low. Le- it's like a low level deck in the big scheme of things, but it can't be played in Edison. So what do you do if you want to play battling boxers? What do you do if you want to play Sulfur Chord? What do you do if you, you want to play right? Like what do you do if you want to play kind Lose. of these newer decks like Amazonas with their new support, but you can't play that in Edison because that card pool is locked. So I think strongly that Konami just needs to find like. Try and promote and like really invest in a just, mid level format. I just had a thought and call it Kingdom Format. Kingdom Format? Like Duelist Kingdom. Oh, format. that's a cool name for it. Because even, that's a cool even name. boy, even Konami, y'all better steal this. Send even, me the royalties later, Konami. Just him, I said this shit. <laughs> but uh, but and just because going back in uh, like Duelist Kingdom, everybody generally, with the exception of like Kaiba, because he had three blue eyes, played one copy of everything. Oh, so you're pushing for this kind of like one-off. Yeah. Like a, a, what, have, what is the name of the one-off? Is that called? Highlander. Highlander. Hmm. Is that it's what a, it's called? It's a, yeah, it's a type of uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh format. Highlander is format. It? Yeah. It's not like, it's not huge. It just has existed. I, I never heard of one it. One copy of every card. Yeah. But you still, you, you still need a balance. I mean, true. But yeah. it was acknowledged because um, we have 
What is the name of the card with Highlander in its name, and it has an effect? Orbital Hydralander. Or- yeah. Orbital Hydralander. You have, to have exactly one copy of cards in your mm-hmm. deck to you, in your grave to use effect. So here's my thing too. Maybe they could have both. Like, because Magic has a few different formats. Pokemon's got a few different formats. I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh can like handle introducing a lot at once. Mm-hmm. But I do think it'd be cool to have a Yu-Gi-Oh format where there's one of every card. And I also think it'd be cool to just have a format that is generally agreed upon to be low power level. Even with the generally agreed upon to be low power level, that would imply that you would have to still have a certain amount of maintenance. The thing and is, and Konami's got to do it. Yeah, yeah. Konami's got to do it. It can't because player will never agree on what that no. is. And and I'll, and the problem with that is Konami is those that they I don't say they have their their hands full with. They us, do because you know we can't be satisfied for anything. In the yeah, world. I don't know that they even have the the, the manpower and yeah. stuff to like commit to balancing <laughs> multiple formats or making product for multiple formats. Guys, this conversation has really spoken to me. Finally, I can have a format where I can play my Apache no, Cephalo ancient stun. What? Yeah. Get out. You know, Skull Dyna Apache Cephalo with some barrier statues. I don't know what you said. Fossil just, Dyna, yeah. Just trying to have a good time. Hmm. And I can play it in this format. And we can all that, have fun together. And I, and I think, even like to what he said, and why you need maintenance, is because then, yes, everybody's going to play Yeah, because everyone's going to try to break it. They'll find that what's Every, the stall Everyone's going to play stall. Kind of lockout deck. But I think that's why maybe this format could have some type of group component where the peer pressure. The peer pressure. Kind of like, ma- like makes people act right. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think, long story short, there, I think that Yu Gi Oh! needs a Magic's commander equivalent not so much that it has to be the same rules or anything like that but more so an easy recommend when you want to play casually when you want to relax or when you're new you're new at a card shop they'll tell you play commander but if you want that same thing for Yu-Gi-Oh, it does not exist because they can only really tell you play the main format and get completely just ran through by the tier or ran through by like you know snake eyes I know there's like speed duel and it feels like that's also kind of getting there and stuff like that. But ultimately, that's what I think Yu-Gi-Oh! needs is a way for you to play these mid-power level decks that are fun and new. And they keep releasing them. And they keep releasing like They release like, you know, Flame Swordsman. They release Melfi or Batman Boxer Support or Sulfa Cord. But like... That is the thing. Like they release all these decks that I don't can't know. can't use. That, yeah, that they you kinda, just can't. You, they know where do you play it? Yeah, you can't. Like where do you play you it? You want to collect it and play I don't know. So is it but you also, go there and you play at your kitchen table? Yeah, you know, I, mean, I don't know. It's we can play at this table. We play at this table. Yeah, we try to do. Uh, okay, so any closing thoughts? I mean, what's what's next? For what? For what? What's what like, are the what, what would be the next steps? For you know, Konami the, or I think for the they, players, they, 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 they for the players. I think well, I'll say for the players. Just go ahead and have an Edison deck in your bag at all times. I'm not doing that. Just go just go throw one I, in there. I, I, I find you a. I'm sorry. I keep there's a window right there, and I'll be my senses be tingling. But um, find you a good group of friends that you, as a group of friends, can like agree and like just have fun and play with. Build you like three or four fun level decks and just roll with it. Um, um. until like say your prayers get answered by the Yu-Gi-Oh gods and you and have a do it themselves you know casual format uh, I don't think that's gonna happen because there's too much else going yeah, on yeah Konami's thinking why would we I mean yeah we got people coming to all these YCS's and what 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 worlds was like this is the record for worlds we've there's been like YCS events where that's been yeah, we so, break it, we break it. so, 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 so to hurt there like if I'm thinking like the little chart graphs. Their bottom line and all. It's, it's yeah. not hurting it. So it's like, why, 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 why? Yeah. Hopefully Konami will watch it and maybe they'll have a change of heart. If you, if you watch this, uh, get at me because I got lots of ideas. Kingdom format. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Kingdom format. I promise. So, well, cool. That was the discussion. We just wanted to talk about it. You guys can, of course, feel free to weigh in down below mm-hmm. in the comments. Always love to hear that. We'll try to stick around, read them, maybe respond to a few. All right, it's going to be it. Tell them all your former stories about you and your friends and the glory. You remember, I brought this up many times. You remember the glorious eight-man random duels? Oh, Lord. Oh. The eight-man, like the table. The right. chaos yeah. duels. Yeah, that we had those at, at the library uh, oh, my, in my hometown. You, you didn't know what was going on. Mm-mm. Imagine having like a, a, <laughs> a ten... 
chain leak 10 with like involving five involving different people. a bunch of people it's like we're chain leak like, 24 we like i don't know so yeah so this results first this <laughs> is like you just said what's what you stop everybody stop <laughs> all right well anyways that's the vid hopefully you guys liked it hmm. we'll see you all in the next one good point pass turn